Can I answer? <laughs> That's what I'm hoping you could do. <laughs> That's a good one, Chris. All things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta give doxology to God hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. So you say you're a Christian. What what made you apostatize? Uh, I would say the majority of those questions were answered with something that on the level of subpar. But the one that always sticks out, I asked my Sunday school teacher when I was a kid, what did Noah do with all the poop? She told me he threw it overboard. That answer for me was unsatisfactory at best. So I kept asking. <laughs> Long story I'm short, sorry. she I'm told sorry. me. No, no, go ahead. Most people laugh at that story anyway. Okay. It's true. All right. And then at the age of 39, I was just like, you know what? Got tired of unsatisfactory answers. So here I am. All right. Stuff just didn't add up. All right. Okay. Um, so because of poop. All right. Well, interesting. Poop. But no, I also. I didn't say it was because of poop. <laughs> I didn't say it was well, poop. That, that was one of the reasons. That's the story. Yeah, that's a story that stood out in my mind. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. What is your uh, epistemology? What what grounds your epistemic framework? I don't even think about it, to be honest with you. You don't you don't think about how you know things. I test how I know things. Yeah, but how how you te- how do you test something without knowledge? Like I said, don't think about it. Are you of the uh, Are you of the um framework that says uh, morality is subjective or objective? Uh, I'll be honest about that. Uh, the labels, don't care. Like, well, you don't have to. Objective you don't have to. versus uh, subjective, because to me that doesn't affect the bottom line. Like, is an action moral? Is it? Is it objectively bad or subjectively bad? For me, it doesn't matter. All I care about is the action. Like, did someone root for the Atlanta Falcons in my house? That's bad. And I don't care if it's objectively <laughs> or subjectively bad. It's okay. just bad. The action still happened. So I don't wrap myself up too much in the labels like objective and subjective. And so I think okay. it does matter if an action is objective or subjective. Okay. But, I mean, if you want to use that to say that's how we're going to base our laws... I guess you won't get much of an argument out of me on that. But how but do you determine? Like, go ahead. What's how, that? But but how do you determine if an action actually is uh, uh, objectively good or bad? Well, I'll say how I can tell it's good or bad because I don't do the objective stuff. Well, did it that, cause good or did it cause harm? It does matter because if it's subjectively, okay. it's based on it, it's 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 not inherent. It's not. Again, it's it's. You like chocolate ice cream? I like vanilla. I mean, who cares at okay. the end of the day? So right. an action being objectively good or but evil, it actually does tells matter. Me you're, are you talking about something bigger than ice cream and who we root for on football Sunday? Yeah, I'm talking about moral actions. Yeah, yeah, moral, moral right. things. So is rape objectively bad or objectively or subjectively bad? I will be honest with you right now when I tell you that's usually not a road I go down. But it's a real life example. Yes, I'm very well aware of that because it's what I do for a living. You rape people and for I, a living? Yeah. I'm a women's self-defense teacher, Chris. Oh, okay, cool. I, I mean, we're talking about rape. I didn't know we were talking about defense. Right. Well, I teach them how to fight. Well, we pre- I appreciate you for your service there. Thank you so much. All right. No one's ever been brought comfort by, you know what, Susie? I know that was bad. But someone called it objectively bad. How about this? She doesn't care. So as no, hold on. She doesn't care. So as a result, I really don't care. But please go ahead. You don't. You don't care if this action that was done to her was actually bad. Chris, what was done to her was bad. By what? And now I'm there to help her through. By hers, because she came to me. She's hurt. I feel the hurt, so I hurt, and that's really it. So are you saying you you deem if an action is good or bad based on if it hurts people? In the case of what you just talked about, yes. Susie was hurt by what someone else did. So and by that's that, what I know. And that's what I go off of. So by that standard, you think you would believe abortion is bad, right? 
objectively. Abortion's not my call. I don't have a womb. I didn't say that. But it you does were talking hurt. about rape. Now we're talking about abortion. Are we you on abortion now? You didn't get raped, but you were willing to say it's bad. But now when I switch to you're abortion right. and it's not yours, you're, you're saying, hands off with that one. Because I'm pro-choice. You are correct. But it hurts somebody. Seems you have a very arbitrary definition of bad. Not to me. <laughs> it works for me, Jack. I understand how that's a, a tough position to no, deal stop, with. For stop, an stop, no, stop, stop, no, stop, stop. Yes, okay, would, then I'm going to be honest with you. Would, you are bad at being a human, Chris. Well, if you're going to sit there in front of a person. I, you don't have a standard to you, call me bad. I, and I don't care. And I, I do not care. So if it's, you're gonna sit it's like calling me good in your world. I'll take the compliment. And if you are going to sit I'll in take front that of compliment. someone who is telling you about the worst day of their life, and you're going to say, well, Susie, was it objectively wrong? No, no, no. I wouldn't say that. I would say what was done to you was objectively evil. And the person who did this to you should be, should be put to death because that was an evil action. I wouldn't tell her what you would say. Doesn't matter Which, what happened. You hurt. That's your world. Say that? uh, I'll be honest about that. Uh, the labels don't care. Susie was hurt by what someone else did. That, no, yes, absolutely not. you no, did. No, it is not. No. <laughs> Everyone's is, listening. You know what? Because the atheist worldview is contradictory. It can't live consistency in the world that it lives in. Because this is God's world. Did I, did I just say that atheism was my worldview, Chris? Are you an atheist? You have a mustache. I'm not a mustache, though. You're an atheist. See, this is actually right. where it's okay. Here I'm also left-handed. Okay. I'm also bald-headed. But, but you're not a left hand. You're not a bald hand. And, These and are features you means, have. And none of that. Not your worldview. I'm actually talking you, about Robert Reed now. So would you mind if you let me talk about myself? But you're 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 conflating what a worldview Probably is versus not. features you okay. have. What is your worldview? Don't know. Would you like to give me some suggestions? Well, yeah, Christianity. How about that? <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, so you have a humanistic, naturalistic, anti-God worldview. That is the world in which you, that's the way in which you see the world. I have a Christian worldview. I see the world through my Christian lens. Man, you stuck a lot of stuff in there. I'm anti-God? You don't believe in God, right? No. Yeah, you're anti-God. I got, I, atheist. No God. That's Am your worldview. Am I also anti-Brussels sprouts? Brussels no, sprouts I... are not a worldview. Keep going, Chris. Are we going to have a mature conversation? or? Did you hear me say that atheism does not, or my non-belief in your God does not shape how I see the world or how it, I interact with it? It absolutely does. Let me show you how. Let me ask you a question. Which God are we talking about? Well, the only God there is, the only one that I've been talking about, the Christian God of the uh, Bible. There, so. Well, there are about 2,000 other practicing so, religions. I already so know you're, what you're going to so say. So you're a polytheist no, now. Not. You're an atheist. You don't believe in any gods. Now you're going to polytheist. Is there, it, Stand on the foundation, sir, so I can chop it off. And but I you just, just want to bring you, up polytheism down. and Brussels sprouts and bald heads. Don't forget that's bald headed. I said left handed. Yes, left handed, that's correct. Why don't, why don't we also throw in. Wow, I guess that means I'm anti Atlanta Falcons. But I mean, <laughs> is this serious? Am, am I being pumped right so. now? I can ask you the exact Marco, same Marco, question. Marco, Marco. They actually run the place. Those are the people that actually your critique is actually uh, accurate about with the false persecution of them. You speak on LGBTQ so? people. Oh my goodness! I the you're, you're right. going to make me kill myself because you don't agree with my identity. That's absurd. <laughs> Okay, now we can talk about something. Whether it's objectively wrong or objective, doesn't help that rape survivor one out. So I think we agree that it's bad. And if By that's standard? the case, I think, and I think we should hold hands and walk into the sunset because we agree that I don't something think we do like agree. that is awful. Okay, then, then we just don't agree. And that's fine. Because when I go to work tomorrow, I'm going to do my job. Objectively or subjectively? My job the best, like I said, I'm going to do my job. You don't actually want to defend the claim you make. You just say, well, it's, it's just bad. It just is. So, so I'll use the same argument. God exists. He just okay. does. Okay. It just is. Just Which is. is fine. You're right. It, it's, it's fine. 
the bottom line still stands. What I do tomorrow at work, I still have to do my job. And I don't care if you or anyone else calls it objective or subjective. I'm going to go do my job. The rapist views the same way. Doesn't care if you believe it's wrong or right. He's going to go do his thing. And I now I have to go do my job. So does he. And if I could stop, right. And if I could stop him, I will. Why would you stop him if it's not objectively wrong? I you have care. no basis. So you, you Which is your opinion, whatever. which is fine. But if I see You've already stated what's happening, I will try to stop it. Stop it? Why? You will only stop something I've that's objective. Told you. Hold on. I've Robert, already let told me explain. You, let me explain my no. Chris, no. I can't even explain it. To explain Why are we talking? Because you already have. Because you already have. I and haven't now, explained. I'm trying to explain. You have. You actually just did. And now I'm telling what, you. So what did I say? If I see, if I see a crime happening, Chris, I'm going to stop it if I can. I can't stop it at all the times. So by the time these ladies come to me, I'm going to do my job. And that's really for me, for me, Chris, that's what matters. Doing my job. The labels on the outside, to me, does not affect my bottom line. And you're right. There are people out there who are motivated to do bad stuff. Argue the, the whole thing about objectivity. It matters a lot more than you willing to grant it. In your opinion, Chris, knock yourself out. But again, explain this. whether I'm right or wrong, you have no foundation to say I'm right or wrong. I'll just do knock my job. Out. I'll just do my job. I, just like right. you. On a basis of something being a crime, how do you determine if that crime is something that's good or bad? For example, slavery once was uh, dominant in this culture. It was legal to have a slave, to force somebody from you another know. country and to enslave them. On that basis, I want you to actually answer the question. On that basis, why shouldn't have slave masters done their job and not and continued on with slavery since it was it was it was the law? Wow, you really went for it there, didn't you? Slavery? I think slavery sucks. By what standard? What about it was once legal. My I know that, Chris. You weren't alive then. My you weren't alive then. I'm directly affected by it. So what? Well, that's your opinion. But Again, it hurts me. You weren't alive. And I don't then. care, Chris. Well, did it that's... cause good or did it cause harm? Alive and I don't then. care, Chris. You don't care. There we go. You. There we heard it. You don't care. That's the real just reason. Like... That's the real reason. So I gave you something that was once legal. You said we should be following the law. It's a crime. You you appeal to the legal system. I didn't say that. I didn't. You didn't say do that. that. You didn't do that for rape. That it's against the law. You will stop no. it because it's against the law. No, that's not what I said at all. If I see, if I see a crime happening, Chris, I'm going to stop it if I can. So why would you stop rape? If I see, if I see a crime happening, Chris, I'm going to stop it if I can. No, that's not what I said at all. I don't like it, Chris. <laughs> I didn't say anything about legality. If I see, if I see a crime happening, Chris, I'm going to stop it if I can. Do you believe truth that. is absolute and objective and universal? Don't care. I will operate off of maximum certainty. There. Did I play the game? Did I do it right? So maximum certainty is <laughs> truth. If that's what you want to call it. That, that's what you just said. That's not what I'm okay, calling it. Let's go, said. Well, let's go forward to see how I have to defend myself on this one. Yes. So maximum certainty is truth. Don't know, because I don't know where you're going with this, so I'm just going to see how it goes. <laughs> Can I answer? That's what I'm hoping you could do. <laughs> That's a good one, Chris. No, 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 no. Because no, you're not willing actually, to spend anything. It's like no, nailing jello right, on Chris. a wall. I, I, you're right, because yes, I when know. you talk to a pre-sub, yeah, when you talk to a pre-sub, and when you do your clips and put them on YouTube, make sure you put this one out there. When you talk to a pre-sub, you got to realize they are already five steps ahead of you. Absolutely. I do not believe. I do not believe. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good. I do not believe that precepts have conversations. I believe precepts push people through flow charts. No, we, we, expose, we expose the this contradictory worldviews of yourselves. Chris, I have told you. I have told you who I am and what I believe in. And you have told me that I'm wrong about myself. Yes, you're wrong about your worldview. Yes, Absolutely. Which, right. I told that you we were going to disagree. Yeah. Right. And you know what? <laughs> what you think was going to happen? Have not, and you know what I have not done to you? That. Do you believe people should be logical? 
Like the laws of luck. Are you about to hit me with pizza sleeps fast under the West, therefore no nope. the, the laws of nice. logic are universal and objective and absolute. The very thing you don't want to appeal and stand on the foundation of. If I'm not mistaken, because I'm also not a philosophy guy, the laws of logic are a description of reality, right? Yeah, which is absolute, universal, okay. uh, and objective. Whatever you say, I'm not a philosophy guy. <laughs> so the very thing you don't want to stand on for logic, you've, you've thrown out the window and said, it doesn't matter because it well, doesn't affect your bottom line. I'm also listening to someone who's got uh, something to push. Are you the yeah, ultimate I, philosophy guy? I, 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 I do have something to push. God's law. I, God's standard. Great. But I don't believe in your God, Chris. But it's irrelevant. You, you, you're right. You've you're thrown right. off the you're standard right. for right. you. You you've landed off the foundation objectivity, so it doesn't really matter yeah. what you think. <laughs> okay. I, I'm dealing with someone who just said objectivity doesn't matter because it doesn't affect his bottom line, and and I should care if what you think about God. This is the absurdity of atheism. I, this is absurdity of atheism. <laughs> Atheism makes no sense morally, <laughs> philosophically, and I, and I objectively. Will say the exact same thing about Christianity. But you have no Christians standard to stand up. You've already you've I've already got, thrown objectivity out the window. Standard. I've got my standard, and what that's is your, good enough for me, Chris. What is your standard? Let's hear this. Robert Reed. Robert Reed is so my what? standard. Exactly. Just like Who's, I say, so what? Robert about Reed. Your God, Robert Reed it was born and he'll die. The of it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and you don't have to listen. To a word I say, nor believe a word that I say. You are not the standard the for objectivity or morals. Nobody goes and to I you to find out to what me. is truth. And I don't care if they do. I don't care. So if you they cannot do. be the standard. For me, that is all I need. My so, family seems so to agree. pretty cool. So truth My is subjective. That's a subjective appeal. Whatever you say, dude. <laughs> whatever you say is how is that an argument how is that an argument yours. whatever you say if you allow me to finish i will answer i know you think you've got the mot thank you so much you can bring someone else from another religion to tell you how you are wrong and i can hear about and i don't care about your two because we don't agree on the second we still don't agree on the second you don't have you know what you're not even atheist because you don't have a, a formulated worldview and exactly what I'm talking about, that I can tell you you're not a Christian. I have a formulated worldview. Doesn't matter. I don't think you're a Christian, Chris. <laughs> you don't have any objectivity to say anything, positive or negative. Actually, mm, you, sir, are You've not thrown that out the window. As did you. I didn't. I've, I've been standing on objectivity. All right, so I'm going to share this because, but I do want to share this. And, and if you could allow me to, if you could allow me to actually get this out. Okay, because this is actually important. This is the reason why I do what I do on my channel. Mm. The, real, the reality of the matter is, Robert, yeah, the reality of the matter, Robert, is that we've all sinned against a holy, infinite God. And we will stand before okay. this God, whether we suppress this truth and the righteousness. And this can be done various ways. Or rather, we believe in him. We'll stand before God and we'll give an account for every word we've done. And unless Robert, Chris, all the listeners out there turn to Jesus Christ in faith and repent of our sins and trust in what he did. He died an atoning death. He lived the death we, he lived the life we should. He died on the cross and rose from the dead. Um, unless you believe that you will perish in your sin. And not only that, uh, one of the good things about the gospel uh, is that he did not only come to die for our sins, but he came to change our way of thinking. The Bible says that our way of thinking is absurd. When we reject this, there are only two religions at the end of the day, God or absurdity. Robert, you have chose absurdity. And I pray that you will repent of this. What is your response to that, sir? I don't have one. I don't believe what you just said was true. You have now thrown you out objectivity. About objective. I know you're going to say that. <laughs> You've thrown out reality, absolute, all that. Saying okay. you don't believe something is you. irrelevant. I want you to refute it. I told you I don't believe yep. in Christianity, the Bible. And yep. did you quote at me Christianity and the Bible? Amen. Okay. What if somebody doesn't believe in logic? Can I use logic now? Mm. Knock yourself out. Can you use logic now? What do you mean? Someone says, I don't believe in all that logic stuff. 
Can I use logic? If you want to. I don't know where you're going with that. You could, your argument was you don't believe in none of that God stuff, the Bible stuff. Therefore, I should have quoted it to you. So okay. if someone doesn't believe in logic, should I now throw logic out the window? Uh, I think I see what you're saying. Uh, you may absolutely throw logic out of the window, but you got to understand there is a five minutes after. Here's the point. Once you throw logic out the window, you cannot have a coherent conversation. That includes you as well. So once you say logic can be thrown out the window, even That's saying that doesn't point. make sense is a nonsensical uh, logical statement, which you lose logic to examine that, which Chris, you've proven okay. your own absurdity at that point. Again. Okay. Well, which what are my options, Chris? What's that? What are my options? What are your re -op options for what? Reality? Yes, sir. Oh, believing God exists. That's it. Oh, okay. There's only one real reality. I mean, his world, he created it. I mean, there's only one re real reality. Because if you've heard my, my videos on apologists, as far as I'm concerned, apologist is Cajun for liar. What's wrong with lying? You're, you're God. You don't have to agree. That's the beauty. There we go. You, I, you, I take that right? as a compliment. I'm a liar. That's you, a compliment. Thank you. If you don't want to tell me the view. truth, Chris, if you don't want and make sure, again, when you throw this out there, put this in. You don't it's have all here. to tell me the truth, Chris. You don't have to. But when so, I bust you in a lie, hold on. I'm going to finish this. But when I bust you in a lie, you can't act shocked and surprised that I don't trust you anymore. So, okay. If you so, bust you lie, you call it objective. So my voice just cracked like I'm a teenager. Right? <laughs> I told you I was sick, man. I told this cedar feet. I got some <laughs> healing power for you. If you can get your uh, prayer warriors on this cedar fever, much appreciated. Again, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to tell the truth. You don't have to be logical. Do let me hear what I just hear what you said. People are not obligated to live truthfully, logically, or morally. Is that correct? Chris, people tell lies all the time. So, so people, people are, do immoral things okay. all the time. There we go. So I don't know what you mean by obligation. Meaning because whether they're not obligated. Again, they're not. They don't have to live this way. People obviously don't, Chris. Okay. People obviously don't. So therefore, how can you punish I, them if they're not obligated to live this way? Because the majority of us do think that certain items are not okay. Mike makes right. I didn't say that. The majority, I didn't say that so at all. majority makes determines how people. Actually, Chris, make. have you ever talked to a sociologist? Hold, hold on a sec. Hold on a second. I'm going somewhere. No, I'm, I'm actually go, go ahead. Because so, you appeal to the masses as why people should live this way. And then I said that's not Mike makes right. That's not what I said at all. So the majority makes right. Also not what I said. Because the majority of us do think that certain items are not okay. Because the majority of us do think that certain items are not okay. I was asking you, have you ever talked to a sociologist about this? About what? Why people act the way they act. Oh yeah, I've talked to the greatest sociologist who's ever to live, ever ever to, to, to be about. Is it God? Absolutely. He ah, made man. There we go. He made man. Okay. He knows man. Well, he knows society gotcha, better gotcha, than gotcha. anyone. Well, I, gotcha. gonna, I sweat for a living, Chris. You sweat? I, I do. Oh. My job's very physical. Me too. I sweat. There you go. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is there are sociologists. The study of human behavior. Mm -hmm. They can give you a better answer. I sweat for a living. Oh. My point is, you're asking a fighter questions that a sociologist is qualified to answer. Well, then you shouldn't have so no... Asking an atheist, so asking an atheist questions and then acting that that's a gotcha is like me asking you, Where's the horse bite on the human body? That sounds you know like an it that sounds like an admission that I did get you because you're not studied in no, this field. I, I, I don't think I said anything other than that. You Chris, came onto a podcast to discuss things like truth, morality. I was very clear that's what we're no, going to be talking about. <laughs> right, and I told you, and I told you, I don't care about objective and subjective, and that's all we've talked about. I've told you what I do care about when it we comes talked to about morality. absolutes. We talked about logic, and I said, and I said I don't care about absolutes because I put that in the same game. Let, 
let me, as let me, let me get, to, let me get this I correct. I told you about logic, and I said about logic, Chris. You are not obligated. You don't have to be logical. When you said, yeah, I, I feel the exact same way. I feel the exact same way. That's not what I, I asked. Want to push you. I know that, Chris. <laughs> so, I just how can we you, have a conversation if you don't answer my questions? I've been answering. You just don't like what I'm answering because I realize I'm talking to a pre-sub. So you you're not going to answer push my push question. Into. You're right. This is why presupposition no, is powerful, no, people who are watching, because the atheist you, gets guys. their mouth shut and they're not willing to actually yes. answer the questions that they're being told to. You're going to continue to assert what my worldview can and can't do, even though we have not established what it is. Remember I asked you and you said you weren't willing originally, but then you no, said you don't, you don't said, have a formulated worldview. You're just the guy I who said, sweats. No, you're just the guy who sweats. I said it. <laughs> I don't care. I yeah, you, that you don't care about way. your worldview. You, you don't, you don't care about your worldview. Not what I said, but please continue. I swear. I said it. I don't care. I yeah, you, that you don't care about way. your worldview. You just said that's what you said. You just said you don't care about your worldview. I literally repeated you. You said that. That's the go-to okay. atheist answer. Uh, that's the go-to atheist answer. Uh, I didn't say that. I, I, I didn't say that. I literally quoted you. I don't think about worldviews. I don't think about objective. That's obvious. I don't think about subjective. That's obvious. I, you did. I actually. don't think Christianity is real. According to what? I think you, guys you don't have an objective standard of reality. As much. You you can't tell you you don't have a worldview for metaphysics. Times? You know what? You don't have a worse standard for metaphysics to call something fake. Chris, do I care if anything is objective? No, you don't. <laughs> right. So then that's what I'm proving. <laughs> because our whole conversation is dependent upon it. Whatever you want to call it. I'm sure you're a nice guy. You I'm really sure like Waterloo? Holy crap. Oh, man, that's great, man. Is it really? What's in your cup? I, I just, uh, electrolytes. Electrolytes. Okay. electrolytes. I do like electrolytes. Do you, oh, man, I always found Waterloo to be just kind of sugarless soda. Man, like the stuff that you send back. You're about it, to get banned. That's the one thing that will get you banned from this show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what got it? Well, for me, it's Atlanta Falcons. Now, I think at the end of the day, if I may say anything, I've always said disagreement doesn't have to be disrespect. Chris, I didn't buy a single word you said. And I'm pretty sure you didn't buy a single word that I said. If your house was on fire, I'd be the first one to jump in and try and pull you out. Why is that? So I don't want you to die in a fire, Chris. And I don't care whether you think it's objective or not. <laughs> I would do it. I it sounds do like it. you do the and, death is and bad. I keep saying, wait, I'm going to keep talking. Okay. I do want to hear you. I've said for not, thank you. I've said for 90 minutes, I don't care about objective or subjective. For me, Chris, not for you. It does not affect my bottom line. All I care is about what happened. Whether your God exists or not, uh, trying to think of something that just happened. There was four kids who passed away at the University of Idaho. You would argue it's objectively wrong. I would say it's wrong. And if I saw the families, I would try to help. For me, Chris, for me, that's all I care about. You care about the labels of objective versus subjective. The concept. And that were oh, the concept. And that's what works for you, Chris. That's what works for you. It's not what works you for know, me. I'm not a pragmatist. Well, whatever your God, the Bible, whatever words you're saying, I'm just trying to say it. Whatever works for you, Chris, knock yourself out. I am telling you from again, 90 minutes ago. You're right. I came on your channel. And I told you, I don't care about objective, subjective philosophy. I, I do my job. I well, try to put more good in this world than I do bad. Everything else, Chris, to me, is an argument. And I just the, don't care. The Imago Day leaking out. Well, let me share this. Uh, we'll probably wrap please, it up here in a sec. But please share. There's a greater fire that you need to be saved yeah. from. By Hell? God's by God's grace, He will use people like me to snatch you out of it. That is my hope, Robert. 
me and my wife, my, my people, my church will be praying for you that you will come to objective reality and truth by God's grace. I it's know, all I know. good. It's all good. It's all good. I know. Hey, man, appreciate your time, man. Of course, Chris. You guys yep. be good to yourself. And you know what? Be good. All right. Be good. <laughs> objectively good. Be objectively good. That's right. We're going to do by God's grace. All right. Hey, have a good one. Very interesting, huh? Very interesting. You know, I was talking to a, a brother last night. I think I'm going to try to uh, work together on a um, apologetic uh, course, doing some videos, maybe like five or so videos, because a lot of people are lost in what's going on. A lot of people just see this as silly arguments, right? Why are you arguing about logic? Why are you arguing about truth? Just, just give them a Bible verse, right? Just give them proof, give them evidences. And I don't, I don't think they understand what's going on is that atheists do not want argumentation. They don't want evidences. Matter of fact, they don't have a worldview that can accept evidence. Evidence is absolute. It's objective. It's universal. Uh, the atheist denies all that. How can I give someone evidence that, uh, that denies the grounding for evidence stands on? So I want to go through and do a, uh, uh, some videos on, on explaining some of these things to help Christians, one, be able to defend their worldview. I'm reminded of the verse in Corinthians that talks about we dismantle, we destroy arguments in every lofty opinion against the truth of God. That's what the apologist is doing. He's peeling back the fingers of the one holding down, right? Imagine you ever put a beach volleyball under the water. That is the atheist. He is suppressing the truth of God. And what is the apologist doing? He's peeling back his fingers, saying, let the truth speak. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why don't you just present your evidence? I just explained why. Right? So I want to give a, a, an apologetic uh, discourse, uh, you know, give some... Uh, groundings to help guys be able to understand what's going on in these argumentations. They do not want the truth. They don't want the truth of God. They don't want evidences. Right? You give them an evidence, right? For Christians, what's, what's evidential for us, right? Man, a creator, creation demands creation, right? You show the meticular, meticulous nature of the body. Look, look, the body is not just random chance, right? The body is not just random chance. S society, the world is not just random chance, as the atheist claims. That is good evidence that we're living in a created, ordered by God, right? What does the atheist do? Foolishness, right? They say it's foolery. Right. And so what I was doing is showing that they have no actual worldview to stand on to even critique God. Like I said, I want to lay this out in maybe five 45 minute hour long presentations to help people understand. Yeah, that's right. That's what my brother said. Robert had already already had and seen all the evidence. <laughs> he has all of God's creation. What do you mean present him evidence? He's he's living in God's world saying there is no God. This is God's world, right? You know the song, this is my father's world, that good hymn. This is God's world he lives in, right? Saying, you know, there is no God. The foolery, right? Someone quote Romans 1, absolutely. Absolutely. My, my, my brother's on tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert just rejects it or reinterprets it to fit their unrighteousness. Yes. See, the atheist stands on the morality of God. They stand on the branch they're sitting on. But say, no God. No God, right? The, no God, right? The, 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 the argument isn't an intellectual one. It's a moral one. It's a moral one. It's not over who's smarter and who has the best evidences and who's been studying every uh, molecular structure of, the, of a cell and who can get back to the DNA structure of God. And No. It's a moral issue. The issue is moral. They don't want God. The issue is not a matter of intellectual 
arguments. I admit, many atheists are smart. As Bonton said, atheists can count. Sometimes atheists can count better than Christians. But atheists cannot account for their county. Let me say that again. Atheists can count. Sometimes atheists can count better than Christians. But atheists cannot account for their county. Hey, and we just saw it. Whenever pressed on his views, I don't want to defend that. Does it matter if it's objective? Does it matter if it's logical? Does it matter if it's objectively moral? Don't want to stand on the ground that they're defending. Because once you start getting to the back to, to the matter of objectivity, right? Logical, absolute, universal. It starts to expose the, the atheist worldview. And you actually see they're not actually living consistent with their profession. They're not living consistent in their, in their claim, there is no God. Everyone's dependent upon God, even the atheist. The atheist is dependent on their very next breath. It, you start to see the grace of God in this. That this man, woman, you know, don't want to be, <laughs> don't want to be sexist here. Is very dependent upon the God who created them. Yet they are using their very breath to shake their fist at God. It's as a famous apologist once said that the atheist is certain of two things. God does not exist and they hate him as well. So, like I said, I do want to put together some apologetic uh, methodology, some apologetic works to um, hopefully encourage you Christians in defending uh, what you claim to believe. It's important, right? It's, Im it's important to proclaim the truth, right? But we also have to defend the truth, defend these things, right? And I want to help Christians be able to uh, get into discussions like this and not to be fearful. You know, I remember I used to be uh, very fearful to talk to atheists. Like, oh man, they're so smart, right? They're so smart, <laughs> right? Till you actually understand the infinite one we're, uh, we're dependent upon. We have the infinite one. We're, we have the infinite one who has infinite knowledge. Infinite knowledge. He reigns universally. Shout out to Shaolin, right? Like, shout out to Shaolin. Because a lot of these atheists, a lot of these Christians atheists, is ducking the smoke. I want all the smoke. I, I wake up motivated. I wake up trying to bless somebody, inspire somebody, encourage somebody, help somebody to the next level. I got time today. I got time today.